Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So today I have the absolute pleasure of introducing you to a young man who reached out to me after a video. I think if you remember, I posted a video last year um, asking if there were any autistic adults who wanted to reach out and talk to me and would be willing to share their experience of what it's like to be an autistic adult, getting a job, etc. And this lovely gentleman called Jacob reached out to me and said he would like to talk to me. So I caught up with Jacob via Zoom and I'm really excited for you to hear how our conversation went. He had some really good advice for us parents out there. And yeah, hope you enjoy our interview. Hi. Yeah, Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Um, my name is Jacob. I'm 28 years old and I live in the United States. So I was diagnosed when I was four. Mm -hmm. But my mom um, didn't tell me about my autism until I was 12, and I felt like it wasn't the right time and it should have been a little earlier. Would you suggest to other parents that tell your children, like, it's you just tell them when they're as early as possible? Um, probably tell them when they're old enough to understand, which could be like six, seven, or eight. Yeah. yeah, no, that's really good advice. I mean, we, I mean, Dylan is so proud to be autistic. He always says, I feel sorry for people who aren't autistic, mom. <laughs> that's funny, you know, I mean, it's like a superpower. But, it is. Um, I was kind of afraid to talk about my autism because, yeah. especially in middle school and high school, because I felt like, oh, kids are going to make fun of me. And it's not like they aren't already making fun of me. Yeah. How, how was it going through teenagehood for you? Teenagehood was kind of rough because um, of bullying. Basically, I was like 12 and um, my friend, we were, my class was reading this book called Joey Pigsma. I forget what the last name was, but mm -hmm. my friends were like making fun of the fact that he had autism. And he said, like, he, they were saying like, oh, he's crazy. He has autism. And I was mm. like, oh, I um, once had, um, depression in high school and it was basically um be about bullying but mm -hmm. but in the depression i would sometimes get really upset over little things that happen and things like oh i'm such a failure and stuff how are you feeling now did your depression get better as you got older oh um it went up and down and now um i just try and tell myself give it some time um yeah. things will get better when you are really down low in life, um, try to tell a trusted person at the school um, because um, it may not seem like they'd help or you want or you're embarrassed about what's going on with you, but recovery will happen better if you um, talk to other people or talk to the adults in the school because um, recently I found my principal's profile picture who did help me with bullying at one time mm -hmm. and it said he worked with troubled kids and I was thinking like man you know he could have really helped me if I told him how depressed I was yeah it was hard for you because you know you said you're 28 now right yes so you know 28 years ago people didn't really know much about autism and now one in 54 children are diagnosed so more and more people I think are understanding which is a really good thing I have other disabilities too, like OCD and Tourette's. Now these days, like, I get more angry, especially like when the tics happen, but it's usually like when like something goes wrong. When you feel yourself getting angry or frustrated, how do you kind of calm yourself down? How do you self-regulate yourself? It depends on what the situation is. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to wait it out, but other times I try and look at that and think, hey, this isn't that bad because the facts show different than what I'm thinking is. I still feel like I'm lost in my life sometimes, yeah. in some ways more than when I was a kid, but that's partly due to OCD. Sometimes I don't understand why my head reacts the way it does, like with the OCD, or like sometimes I'm just confused on certain things. Like, for example, um, every time you went to an amusement park, um, I would always get to ride a tram, but then um, when I didn't, when I had to walk, it wasn't so much that I had to walk, 
but it's just it wasn't the same thing and I was like really upset about that yeah a change in routine change in routine um but sometimes it also has to do with age where like I just think in the past of what happened I think oh I can still do that and then my parents are like oh um you shouldn't really do that because you're this age now and I'm like well, how am I supposed to know that? Yeah. Would you like to get married one day and have children? Uh, I don't know about having children, but um, I really don't know yet. Yeah. I also want to mention that, like, um, that, that like when I was growing up, I um, thought I was straight, but then um, I found that I was bi. Okay. Still trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, I think. Do you know what? I think a lot of people are always are still trying to figure out who they are, and you know, you can be attracted to the person, not just the gender, right? Yes. <laughs> My very first crush was when I was four years old or five years old. Wow, that was young. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I'll tell you, there was this girl on the bus who I liked, yeah. and I really liked how pretty she was, and um, then she. But then um, one day I found out she was moving and I was crying. Oh, that's a sad story. Do you have any happier yeah. stories? <laughs> there was this girl I liked in first grade and um, and she was pretty. I really liked her ponytail and um, I sometimes imagined her in class flying because she had magical <laughs> earrings, I imagine. Oh. <laughs> It was pretty funny, but then, but this is the best part, um, one day she um, gave me something. Okay. I guess it was for a class project, and um, she gave it to me, and, and I didn't say anything to her because I was shy, Aww. and then my aide was there, and she asked me, why don't you say thank you to her, and I said, oh, I'm really sorry. Oh. <laughs> I wish I said um, that I had feelings for or something like that. However, I surround myself. Yeah. Yesterday. Do you do you find it difficult to talk to your crushes? Do you find it difficult to say something to people? Sometimes. Yeah. It depends. What was it hard for you when you started having getting facial hair? Like, wh how did you feel when your body changed? Oh right. Um, I'll tell you about that. Um, I just went along with it. Like, I mean, the first time I heard about body hair. Um, like I was 11 and I grew hair down there, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And um, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to talk about with my mom's friends. Oh. When they, I just like mentioned to her like, oh, um, I'm growing hair out there. And my, my mom said like, shh, you're not supposed to talk about that. Okay. So like, I was pretty, I wasn't really freaked out about it. I thought, hmm, interesting. But then I'm um, with the beard, I'm with the mustache. Um, I, on my 13th birthday party, I saw that um, that one of my friends was growing a mustache and I just was like, hey, you're growing a mustache, that's kind of funny. And my mom said like, oh, um, well, you have a mustache too. And I was like, really? <laughs> and it was a small one, like a very small one. And yeah. So do you, do you have a job? Yes, I have a job. I work at retail. Oh, amazing. What kind of retail do you do? I do readings and mm -hmm. it's four hours long each day and I want to say I like it but sometimes I get bored. Yeah, I know. How did you how did you get your job? So that's a good question. Um I got it because um the last job I had it closed down and so I was having problems finding a job. Yeah. But then I came across this organization and I'm gonna shout you all out, um, Best Buddies. Um, Best Buddies was this organization that helped people get jobs who have developmental disabilities. They linked me up with TJ Maxx, which is part of their partnership, but um, I felt like it was a good enough change because like the last job I had, I was working at this place called Playland, not the beach, which was a game place. So how long have you been at your job for now? Two years. Two years? Um, yes. That's amazing. Do you have nice people that you work with? Yes, I have very nice coworkers. Um, I mean, I've seen a few drama here and there, but like, it's nothing to be concerned about. Do they understand about you being autistic? Um, I haven't really told them, but I told my bosses. 
because um, Best Buys was with me when they um, when they interviewed me. For parents like us, you know, we can only try and help our children, but we can't be inside their minds. So what is the one piece of advice you would give us as parents to help our children? Like I say, if he's um, very much into routines, like I am sometimes, yeah. um, I say it's best to teach him things that will translate well into adulthood. So I suppose explaining if, things can change? Yes. If he did have um, certain interests, to um, let him be interested yeah. in it, despite what some people may say. And also, um, if he gets too addicted to a video games, um, try to calmly tell him to get off. Okay. Okay. And that's... not make it seem like he's like a super addict or anything. Okay, so it's important to limit, you think it's important to limit the video games? Well, in some cases, like if he plays like four or five hours um, and he's on the screen all day, that, like, that to me is kind of sickening to me because like I've gotten like like my head's been like I get certain feelings in my head mm -hmm. and like I'm like dang I played a lot today yeah is it hard for me hard for you to transition out of because Dylan if he's in a game it's very difficult for me to take him off it oh um it depends like if he, if his game saves let him stay for but give him like 10 minutes yeah okay I want to say um, it took a while to really, um, to really be this articulate because, like, um, like I said, when I was a kid, I was really nervous about my autism, telling to other people. But then, um, as I grew up, I just realized, like, hey, sometimes it was autism, and so I advocate for it now. That is amazing. So I try and empower Dylan to be like, you know, if anyone says anything to you negative about being on the spectrum i always tell him to say that you know steve jobs who created the iphone and they say albert einstein you know all the great minds are were on the spectrum somewhere like it's a little bit of a double-edged sword because like yes it's good that people who are autistic can be successful but the people who are negative about autism well like they have enough like they don't respect you enough to really treat you like the way you need to be treated, but they have enough respect to be like, oh, um, that person was autistic and succeed. Why can't you succeed? Okay, that's like, interesting. Like, you know, negative stuff like that. But um, I want to say that on Facebook, whenever I've seen a person who's struggled and made it, I always ask them, would you look down people who struggled and didn't make it? And the answer is usually no. And I don't get that data. So that way I can like say, you know, why if you didn't succeed as much as everyone else did, the highest people would only encourage you. They wouldn't ever make an ex they would never say, Oh, well you you have to be like me or Yeah. Wow, that is such such good advice. Um, Jacob, thank you so much. I can is it okay if I share your profile with everybody? I have a YouTube as well. Um if I comment on your um on your video yeah. um in the comment. It's called T S Intended Gamer. Okay, because maybe some parents might want to ask you a question, if that's okay. Yes, that's okay. Thank you so, yes, so it's... much for talking to me. You're welcome. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that interview. I found it really insightful, actually. Like, I'm always continuing to learn. And one thing, I mean, there's a lot in that conversation, which I took a lot from but one thing that really stood out in my mind is I've always kind of used famous people in the media uh, famous people who have created things to try and be a bit of a role model for Dylan but one thing that Jacob said is that he felt like he couldn't live up to these people I never even thought about the fact that Dylan would measure himself against these people and think well I haven't done anything amazing so does that make me a failure that was something that really stood out to me because Dylan really wants to be a gamer but equally it's okay if he never does anything like that as long as he's a good person and he can love and be loved that's all I've ever wanted for any of my children so it was a really good reminder for me to explain that to Dylan as well to be like look it doesn't matter you don't have to create an iPhone or you know create electricity not that he could no wait did Albert Einstein create electricity oh gravity wrong wrong thing <laughs> i need to go back to school <laughs> 
Dylan doesn't need to do all these amazing things to feel a self-worth. He can be him. So yeah, I hope you guys found that interesting. Um, if you have any comments or you want to ask Jacob any questions, he said, please comment below and he will respond to them. So again, Jacob, thank you so much for taking part in our interview. And you guys, thanks for watching at home and I'll see you next week.